Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. On this series strategy game, and we are returning to Let's Start Democracy 4, trying to turn France into a theocracy. So let's see how things are going to go. We are very close to election, so I do want to focus a little bit on that, uh, trying to get us over that time. Uh, GDP is growing up, that's looking good. Health is still fairly fantastic, that's nice as well. Do we want to allow for the extension of an airport you know what um i do think we do not want to do that that does decrease tourism and capitalism a little bit but there are a lot of environmentalists and i do want to make sure uh, that these guys are on our side we do have a budget deficit which is still an issue but i do think the global economy is doing somewhat of a turnaround over here uh, and that might ultimately lead us uh, to have some better ratio over here uh, and get our gdp back up so i'm not too concerned about that for now but it is something that we need to watch over time. Obesity coming down, lovely. If it if it wasn't already there, it would not be an issue now, so that's nice to see. Healthcare demand should come down slowly, uh, but really not far enough, fast enough. Respiratory so, disease, sort of the same thing as obesity. And I do think if both of these things were gone, we'd be uh, getting ourselves rid of hospital overcrowding. Now, Hospital overcrowding is the one that I've been thinking about the most, to be honest, in between episodes here, because it's such a big bummer for us, and it's largely driven by these three effects, right? State healthcare services, we could bring that up a little bit more, it would be very costly, but it wouldn't help us really. Population, it doesn't really have a large effect, so the largest effect here that I can see that we can influence is healthcare demand. Healthcare demand has a huge effect on that, actually, uh, but... What is it driven by? Now, health is already maxed out. We can't really affect that. Social care, yeah, we can't really affect that. So it's pretty much bringing down these positive effects or these effects that are driving healthcare demand up. And we need to bring these down. Now, technology is so very nice and I don't want to stop our technology being, being a relevant thing over here. Now, obesity and respiratory disease, these are definitely things that we do want to tackle. Uh, tobacco usage might be very good to tackle as well because that would also drive down respiratory disease and that's pretty much nice. The other big thing though is immigration. That's a whooping 11% here so I do think this is pretty relevant. It's also doing a couple of things here some of which are good and you know generally personally I'm pretty much in favor of immigration but it does increase the membership of ethnic minorities and ethnic minorities due to our all of our other policies are not necessarily specifically happy about us. So I think it might make some sense to try to bring down the membership here of ethnic minorities in our country. There are various things that we could do. We are doing a couple of them already, but border controls, for example, citizenship, citizenship tests. Now border controls, bringing that up, that would have a huge effect on immigration and that's not necessarily the worst idea it is pretty expensive though at 21 political power and doesn't do that much good things for us so i'm not too sure about that but if we go to law and order here i do think it's under law and order isn't it it's always a little bit opaque to me where things do belong in this game public services yeah there we go ban foreign ch church services we could completely ban that, and that would further upset ethnic minorities, as you would understand. It would also upset liberals and drive down immigration. Now, driving down immigration is kind of nice, and it was also, I think, very much in line uh, with what we're trying to achieve. On the other hand, 30 political power, not cheap. Um, and right now, I do not necessarily want to upset the liberals too much, because for now, they are still a very large part of the um, overall... Um, of the overall base over here that we've got. So let's ignore that for now. Ooh, look at that. We've got a couple of terrorists already. So I do think we will need to uh, look at the effectiveness of all of these things. Do we want to bring up intelligence services right now? I don't think so, not right now. Let's try to tackle the election first. Election is in four turns, so that's basically a year. Anything we can do now to influence this is going to be helpful. Now, the other alternative that we would have is a little bit more ridiculous, actually. So, we don't really have private healthcare. Private healthcare is, no, is a non-thing over here. If we had private healthcare, that would help out 
with the hospital overcrowding. And it would pretty much help out in the same way um, that private uh, that state healthcare services does. So this is sort of a perfect supplement. So once you're increasing the other, and it, it sort of doesn't matter where you are, right? So either state or private healthcare services do help you with this specific issue. But here's the interesting bit. So you can't necessarily game that, right? So you cannot necessarily uh, try to get more state healthcare services and, and get rid of that. That's, that's a net overall non-effect on this. But there are two things to consider. One is this is not a linear function. This does in fact have a, a point uh, where you can maximize sort of the overall effect both of state and private healthcare. And that is at around 20% funding um, of state healthcare services. That would be a big change. The other thing is, this does have a delay of about four turns, well, of exactly four turns. So if we, let's say, brought down state healthcare services to a very low level, waited a while, private healthcare service would go up. At that point, we would have the positive effect on healthcare, of healthcare service on hospital overcrowding. And if we then ramped up state healthcare services immediately to a very high level, we would be in a situation where we'd have both at the same time, at least for some time, for about four turns, we'd be having the effect of both of these things on hospital overcrowding. And that would mean that that would probably go away. It wouldn't be a sustainable effect, but I think it would be enough to bring that below the stop trigger and it could then recover. Thing is, that would be extremely expensive in terms of political capital. So I don't think we're going to do either of that. We're going to try to uh, tackle that by looking at immigration. And in fact, uh, we should also actually look at tobacco usage because tobacco, I think we'd want to get rid of that a little bit more. So let's try to bring that down with this little policy here. Uh, just an awareness campaign. It's not a big thing, but tobacco usage is kind of high. So that's okay. Tobacco usage, uh, tobacco tax, increasing that is tempting. It does certainly influence tobacco usage, but it's also influencing the opinion of everyone on us, and it's not a good pre-election move, my friends. So, yeah, let's not do that for a second over here. Right, anything else in particular that we want to look at? Now, I do think we want to keep the egalitarian society. I'm not too concerned about the gig economy because trade unionist membership is actually kind of low, so that doesn't matter too much. Yeah, so it's pretty much obesity only. Well, can we do health coverage's healthy eating campaign? That's useful. That's not really that particularly useful. You know, you know what? Let's go for youth club subsidies because everyone sort of does like that. And the other thing I want to go for is the free eye te uh, free eye tests. Is that under public services or yeah? So yeah, poor people love that. Socialists do poor. People love it again. Health is going to go up. Retired people are going to like it. Poverty is going to come down. Capitalists are going to be a little bit upset, but honestly, I don't care too much. So, yeah. And actually, it's not a big effect on them, whereas it's sort of good for everyone else. It's not that expensive, so let's go and do that. It's, it's universally one of the policies that I do think is very, very good. And we're going to do the same here for youth club subsidies. It's kind of expensive in political terms, uh, but parents, socialist, youth, Youth income, all of that is very good for us. So yeah, let's go for it. Also not that expensive in terms of monetary effects. Right, anything else that we want to do then? Cyberbullying, it's useful for youth and parents, but honestly, none of that is, is extremely useful for us. National Armed Forces Week is actually kind of nice because we do want to increase that a little bit as well. Anything else that we want to increase or anything? No, can't see any policy that is viable to be increased. State healthcare service? No, that's that's a no-no. Well, the Food Standard Agency is nice, but I really don't want to set upset farms too much. We've got a sympathetic minister there. So that's a no. Foreign classes. I don't really want to upset the Patriots. Capitalists do like it, and it does have a good effect on GDP, actually. International trade? This is actually a pretty good investment. Education would also go up, which is pretty nice. It's not that expensive. And education does drive various things. 
including productivity, which would be helpful. The only downside here is that it does drive human development and that can have a negative effect on religious membership. So we actually need to be a little bit careful here because we've got pretty good health already. Education is kind of okay, only wages are sort of low. So we do not want to get too many people there. Transport, we've got nothing that we can do. You know what, let's go for National Armed Forces Week. Strong leader perception here is going to be helpful for the uh, election as well. And I think that's nice, good GDP, stable. Economic forecast, still a bit budget deficit, but at least the global economy is starting to recover a little bit. If you've got a little bit of fantasy, you can see that this is going up here. So that I do think is nice because that will ultimately mean that the debt to GDP ratio is going to drop um, as we are moving out of that. We've got a dilemma here, corporate manslaughter bill. Uh, do we want to pass the law? Do we want to block this law? I'm on the fence here. I don't think in a religious playthrough there is any specific specific way to view that. I think we could block this law because we're sort of thinking about man and his relation to God and, and the laws of God. So we're going to block that. Liberals and trade unions, I'm not going to like it. That's all right. Capitalists do. It's sort of a, not a big issue here, I think. Right. Terrorists, yeah, we are seeing that more multicultural warriors are starting to become a little bit radicalized here. They're still a bit far away from actually trying to shoot us, uh, and I don't want to risk it too much. So, yeah, that's right. Actually, it's funny to see that immigration is still so stable, even though we've introduced border controls to a much higher degree and citizenship tests. So that should bring that down. But I think the high GDP here is it's doing its, its thing to, to keep that up, which is interesting, actually. Right, obesity is still a thing. And respiratory disease will only slowly come down here as tobacco usage is going to try to decline a little bit, I guess. It's not going to decline fast at all. Right. Okay, so we've got the youth club subsidies. We've got the eye tests. Um, anything else that we want to do? Well, I do want to look at the cars. But I don't want to overdo that for now. So, uh, no big nice effects that I could see for now. Can we do some electioneering? We can't write a manifesto yet. We could do a speech and we could try to um, try to help some people as opposed to the others. Now this here is an interesting one because if we are encouraging the socialists uh, that would make them pretty happy and that's 63 percent of the people who has this only 38 um, minus a percentage rounding there. On the other hand, the socialists are kind of pretty much our supporter base in terms of ministers. So I don't want to do that too much here. We've got two of these guys uh, sticking around and I do not want to upset them. Don't want to upset conservatives either. The poor people as opposed to the very wealthy. Well, this is helpful, but this the membership here is just too small for this to be really effective. We could make the Patriots slightly more happy. We could make middle income happy. That's that's a huge one, actually. Yeah, I do think this is a this is a very huge one. Trade unionists, no, I dislike them. Retired. Socialists and make capitalists unhappy. But mm, yeah, I don't think in terms of our election, I don't think this is good. You know what? Let's go. Let's go for let's give a speech here. Uh, to the middle class, yet our distress comes from no failure of substance. We are stricken by no plague of locutus compared with the perils of our... F and I don't know how that goes on, but... Oh, this actually... I don't think I've ever done that in, in Democracy 4 yet because we never needed to. But this time around I'm not too sure because there was a huge dip in uh, our popularity, so... Speech reception. Okay, can we get rid of that? Apparently not, but it seems to be pretty all right-ish. So there we go. Middle income plus five percent happiness. That's actually pretty good, uh, because I do think one of our people here is actually also encouraging with state employees. No, that was before. Anyway, middle income, very large group. So yeah, happy about that. Right, eleven political capital. Anything that we can do, want to do. Concession charging here would be nice. Uh, because it would bring car usage down and that is definitely definitely an important um, aspect that we need to consider 
Healthy eating campaign is useful, but typically subsidized foods foods are better. Where subsidized food? Is it under welfare? It's just just welfare and public services. These ones, I never quite get where things are. Okay, we've got the healthy eating campaign. We've got the food labeling here. Is it under tax? Yeah, health food subsidies. You know what, let's do use that because it is gonna bring down obesity. And I do think that would be very useful. And it's gonna be a huge impact on that and it's relatively cheap. So yeah, let's go for that and I do hope, I don't think it's gonna go away in time because that's probably gonna have a huge like long-term effect here, yeah, nine turns to implement that. But I do think that is gonna be enough to, to get rid of this effect, which is very lovely. Okay, so let's look a little bit at cars uh, because cars are still a big issue here. So what can we do in terms of transport, fuel efficiency? No, that would bring up car usage. So that's a no. Anything that we want to increase over here, hmm, bus subsidies or something. Would make commuters very happy. Bus usage, bus usage would go up nicely and that would bring down car usage but mm, I'm I'm not I'm not sold on that one electric cars does that help the environment it does actually it is kind of expensive though at two billion I do wanna I don't want to overdo it with a budget deficit here school buses parents do like that and it does bring up car usage it's actually kind of expensive in terms of political power which is interesting bus lanes mm, no no, let's not rattle the cage at this point too much. I do think we are going to be we're going to be more or less all right over here. Do we? See, we should really bring up productivity more. And I do have some ideas on that, but they are kind of too radical to be implementing just before an election. So honestly, that's probably no. Free parenting classes—they are usually useful, but not that much. But in terms of welfare, we could go for childcare provision that does bring productivity up. That's actually very, very universally accepted by sort of everyone. It is expensive, but I'm guessing it's okay. Diplomatic service is usually pretty good, but I don't see it fitting in with our theme here. So. Let's hold off on investing for now. Let's see what we're going to get. Ooh, nice. Private space industry. That is very useful. Uh, in particular, since it does make everyone a little bit more happy and it does bring up GDP a little bit. So that's very, very nice. Ooh, but what's not very nice is the flash crash over here. That is actually pretty, pretty unfantastically nice to be getting just before, just before an election. Our popularity here will collapse next turn just because our GDP is going to collapse here. It is going to recover, but there is a chance at least that that does drive, because GDP is one of the largest drivers here of obesity and respiratory disease and car usage and all of that. So, and a very big negative effect on the environment. So we might see a spike here in the environment, which might get let, have all of this uh, going to go away, hopefully. Uncompetitive environment is starting to look a little bit better over here. Very happy about that. Okay, trade union is still kind of unhappy. I think the best bet that we'd have here is congestion charging. Uh, the other one would be high speed rail subsidies. This is going to have a huge, huge time lag. This is going to be very long term. But it does bring car usage down, it does bring unemployment down, it's increasing international trade, bringing... This is just universally good, it's just very, very long term, and it's pretty expensive, so... I would like to do it, but I think for now, we are not going to do that. Uh, the other one, of course, is limit or ban cars in cities. We could do that, actually, um, and it does have some time lag, and it's hugely upsetting motorists, but it's also bringing down motorist membership, so I don't care too much. And the environment is going to be hugely affected by that in a positive way. But then again, these things do are set to go away anyway, right? So I don't think it's it's necessarily something that we need to do right now. 
that does mean we could do some of the religious stuff that we would be looking forward to. Where is it? Public religious broadcasts? Liberals are going to be upset. I don't know just exactly how much, but they would be upset, and I don't necessarily like that. School prayers? Likewise, super nice idea. This is this is one of the extremely good ones in terms of helping us out bringing religious membership up. But liberals are still such a large group of the population that I do not want to do that before the election. We've got two turns here. I do not want to risk it. Oh, we've got a 21 political power here. That's very lovely to see. Okay, let's spend no more than eight this time so that we've got something in, in petto for next turn. Or at least, you know what, let's, let's do that right after the election and I think that is going to be a good idea. Okay, so any smaller things then that we want to do just to help us out? Sunday shopping. This one is a curious one because it doesn't really have any, this is one of the few policies that just doesn't really do anything at scale, so you don't really need to change it in any way. Carbon capture and storage, useful to bring down CO2 emissions, but then again, do we need to do that? Small business grants, very nice actually. Slightly concerned about how many capitalists we've got. Specifically, since we do need to uh, ponder a little bit towards the socialists. The socialists are actually much happier than anyone else. Okay, childcare provision maybe? To bring down, to bring up productivity over the long term? Bring up socialism too? That's gonna be useful. We're gonna count as more compassionate. And we do have the political power to do, you know what, Let's let's go for it. How is your factory on productivity looking? Seems to be pretty linear, so it doesn't really matter where we're sitting. Socialism also kind of linear, yeah. You know what, let's let's do spend all of this. It is very expensive, but I do think it's gonna be all right. Okay, any, any specifically popular thing that we could do? Tax shelters, rural development grants is nice. Farmers like it, rail usage is going to go up, but car usage is going to go up too, so I kind of dislike it. Tech grants, typically very useful, but it does bring down religious membership, so definitely no. Enterprise investment scheme maybe? No, it brings down socialism. Free parenting classes, cyberbullying, I mean it's kind of nice. It does make people happy, it doesn't really cost anything, it's, it's very... And if it uh, doesn't really cost that much in terms of political power either. So you know what, let's do it. Anything else then? I don't think so. Yeah, this again is kind of inexpensive and nice. But not that crucial. Congestion charging is useful. It's extremely useful. Especially since our very high car usage here uh, does drive traffic congestion quite quite heavily. And that does have quite a couple of negative consequences here. Well, I do think we're just going to do some electioneering here. Let's look at the speeches that are available to us. Motorists could make them a little bit more happy. Typically useful, but not uh, that much, I think. Yeah, I don't want to ponder too much to either socialists or capitalists. There are, there are too many capitalists in the population to, to be screwing with them. And there are too many supporters of socialists in our government that we can't screw with them. So, yeah, that's going to be all right. Self-employed. Membership 28 versus trade unionist 8. That seems like a good trade. Don't want to overdo it. Retired versus young people. Trade unionist versus self-employed. Hmm. Wealthy versus poor? No, I don't think I, I encourage either of these things. The only the only potential here do I do see is with either patriots or motorists. You know what? This is a two plus effect, and motorists do constitute a very large proportion of our society here. If we can make them a little bit more happy, I do think that is going to be useful because we are going to upset them probably by banning cars in cities uh, sooner or later. So yeah, just getting a, a boost here is, is going to be helpful. 
Unfortunately, no minister is associated with them, so that's that's uh, unfortunate. But I guess it's going to be all right. Anything else that we, that we can do? Uh, I don't think we can do fundraising. Yeah, at least we are getting some money over here, so that's good. Perception is okay-ish. Can we do a strong leader stunt here? No. Windsurfing for a photo. That's kind of interesting. Compassionate? Anything? Any media stunt that we can do in this? No. And trustworthy? Be fun watching the sports team play. No, no, no. This is not. This is not what we want to do. Calf promises in stone. You know what? That does. That does look uh, very much like we would. Uh, that we would have. Morning television. Builders cafe. No, 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 no. These are not the things that we are doing. Interesting that we can't do media stunt here on compassion, probably because it's too high already. Anyway, let's see what the election is going to bring. Okay, yeah. Things are not great. Okay, so everyone is, is starting to look a little bit worse here. And specifically, business confidence is collapsing here. And that does probably mean that we might actually lose this, which is really not... It's kind of nasty. And that's pretty much only due to the fact that we have that intermediate drop here in GDP, which is pretty, pretty not nice. How's the economic forecast look? Ooh, this, look at this deficit here. Yeah, probably because our debt interest has spiked. It is now 32 million. That is a problem. That is a problem. Our income has dropped. That's going to recover. But our expenditures have increased, both to, due to the childcare provision, but also due to the fact that interest rates are, are much higher than they used to be. The only positive effect I could see is that probably the environment is doing much better now. Yeah. Okay, so it's doing extremely well over here. That's very good because that does mean that respiratory disease here might, and it is going to go away just in time for parents to like us a little bit more. I like it. I like it a lot. Obesity, that's going to take a lot longer here uh, due to the fact that GDP here has a time lag of eight turns. But you know what? That is going to be all right. Hospital overcrowding, I think that is going to be much better uh, ones that at least respiratory disease is going to go away. So so that's nice. That's that's very nice. Okay, we are earning 21. So honestly, I think we're probably going to save up on, on quite a bit of that and, and just see what whether it's going to carry us over uh, the election here. Um, let's do try to... Wait, what was, what was that? Did our funding just collapse? No, that's the membership here of, of one of the parties. Interesting that that is going to come down. Yeah, it really does show that over the last couple of turns we did very much focus on the election, uh, which I think is okay. Okay, maybe last speech over here. Oh, interesting. We have the chance to uh, placate the ethnic minorities, and that might actually be a very, very good thing for us to do um, because... And it is going to be quite interesting to do that, actually. Yeah, I like to see that, honestly, uh, because they're currently extremely upset about it uh, with us, right? So that's not great. That is even feeding into terrorist tendencies over here. Um, so what I want to do is I want to bring down their membership. But in the process of bringing down their membership, it's certainly going to turn out that they're going to hate us a lot more. So if we are... Wait. Do it go away? Why? Why? I did like it. Well, I mean, parents are nice. Oh, that's curious. It's different every time you, you select it. I did not know that. That's weird a little bit as well. Well, we could schmooze up to the religious people then. But you know what? Let's just go for parents because they are a huge part of the population. And I do think a plus two effect here is going to be very helpful just to win the election. Not much more, but that at least is something that we do want to do. And then we are going to turn over to Norths in the next episode and see just how much of an effect on the election that is going to have. Right, okay. Let's see. Here we go then. Yeah, that's looking good. That's looking good. There are a lot of non-voters here. Almost as many as voters, if I see that correctly. 
Uh, but at least, you know, the op opposition is outspending us by quite a bit. Um, and our turnout is not actually that great, but the opposition is just very small. So yeah, that is a historical night as the Defenders of the Faith be get re-election. That is very, very lovely indeed. And you know what? I think with that, I'm... No, I think we are happy with our re guys over here. They are mostly pretty happy. They start to be... They start to be pretty fine. So yeah, I think that's that's fine. Respiratory disease has gone away. GDP is starting to look much better. Lovely, I like it. As a situation that is imminent, not really. That seems to be pretty stable. Deficit fairly huge still, and that is just not going to get better. Ooh, the global economy is actually turning down again. I've rarely ever seen that going going down again. Uh, but still, GDP here is starting to look much better, and I do think. With respiratory disease gone and obesity is set to be gone, I think we're going to see a lot less healthcare demand here um, over time. And that does mean uh, we are going to get rid of the hospital overcrowding. And do you know what? We are going to implement one more. You know what? Yeah, I'm going to keep that for next time. For now, I say thank you very much for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed. Do leave a like. And I hope to see you guys around next time. Bye-bye.